I'm, I'm, um, I, feel, I feel very uh, honoured, really, to be here because, um, you know, it, for me, it's, it's something I don't do very often. I mean, my work is, is seen all over the place. Um, I don't do very many talks, but I'm, I'm quite happy to do it. And Karen's been a friend of mine for, for a little while, and the book is wonderful. Um, and I, I'm sure you've all seen that. What I want to do, apart from get a drink of water, what I want to do is talk about my work, of course, and I want to talk about a very different alternative history of art and go into some other areas which look at shamanism and also look at the, the way in which we, we uh, view reality. And I'm going to come back round to a couple of other things and digress as well. And I'm going to probably talk about the, the nature of, of the times that we're in and how that very much re relates fundamentally to all of the imagery that we see in history and some of the wonderful things that the panel were talking about. In fact, in many ways, I think the talk's going to um, turn into a visual feast, which, uh, which is going to sort of illuminate what was being said earlier in, in many ways. So um, um, at the points where I probably won't talk, I'll keep very quiet and just let you look at the imagery, but we'll see how it goes. This artist, William Blake, for me, was probably one of the uh, geniuses of, um, of the British Isles, in as much that he understood a great truth, and this truth I'll come back to as we go through the imagery, that the imagination is the nearest thing you'll get to in understanding our, our relationship with what many call God. And others call uh, oneness. And what I'm going to do is run through a few slides first and then get into what I think is going on in the world in terms of my experience with, um, with the education system. I'm going to look at the, uh, the nature of reality, like I said. And I'm also going to talk about um, what I think we're going to be doing, and it came up in the panel as well, what we're going to be doing as a species as, a, as, uh, as we understand this, this consciousness and how it changes what we do. So uh, Terence McKenna said a very interesting thing there as well about the soul of mankind. And I think one of the important things in, in terms of my work, and I've been doing this for about, it must be 20 years now, is that what struck a chord with me from being very young was that unless we express ourselves as that individual sovereign being that was being banded around on the panel, then I think we might as well forget about it. And what I would say is that the, the game and the, the nature of reality and the way in which everything is perceived is very much distracting us from being that individual sovereign being, which I'll come to as we go through the slides. As I see it, the, the, the world is very much a, um, a mixture of mayhem and chaos most of the time, and there's a good reason for it. And one of the reasons is that we're being constantly distracted from ourselves. We're being constantly distracted from, from looking at that unique, true, visionary aspect of being, which all great artists, musicians, creative thinkers, poets, philosophers throughout history have all tapped into, which was coming out of the talk earlier. What I want to do is, is go through some of what I would say is more of the darker stuff, not the negative stuff, but the darker stuff before we go into the, um, the reasons why, why things have been like they are. I thought this was a lovely line from Richard Hawley's song, Tonight the Streets Are Ours, which made perfect sense. And this is what I mean about the distraction. What we have to remember, I think, most of the time is that whatever we're doing in life and, and wherever we're taking uh, our, our focus, that's where our, our attention goes in terms of energy. And even with something like this, you know, you're, you're feeling the energy coming off the audience. You're feeling the energy in, in all sorts of ways. Even this area here today, when I was driving around and coming in here, the energy of the place felt very different to the last time I was here. The last time I was here, I had a bath. It was very different then. And, um, because I, you know, I, I look like a big issue seller most of the time. So, anyway, that was a joke. But um, <laughs> you can laugh, by the way. Yeah, I was at, we, were, we were driving around looking a bit lost, and I thought, where's the energy going with this? It wasn't, it wasn't actually working and flowing. And then when I got here, I thought, that's it, wonderful. I noticed it. I thought you couldn't even, you couldn't even got the right kind of symbolism. We had the the lamb and the uh, lion over there, which I thought was wonderful. And opposite, we had the reptile and bird house, the pet house. And I thought, there's something going on there in terms of imagery, which is quite interesting. So, um, and I'll elaborate on that as we go through. Buddha said a very interesting thing. He said that it's your mind that creates this world, which is very true as we'll, we'll get into the imagery. Okay, what I want to talk about is something that I, I spent some time looking at over the last, I would say, last two or three years, which is the functioning of the left and right brain in terms of our creativity. And this wonderful concept came to me as an artist, which was that, what if, what if we were so um, distracted that we'd even forgotten about the, the place from where we came? 
And what I mean by that is that if you understand the nature of reality and we understand the fact that it's easy to distract us with all sorts of games and all sorts of uh, devices, for me, I saw this wonderful image of a fairground that came to town. I've talked about this in other interviews. And this fairground came to town and what it did was set up. And, and over a, a vast amount of time, the fairground got bigger, got huge, it got more sophisticated, it got brighter, to a point where it seemed like there was no other alternative reality, only the fairground. And when I was making this painting, I was constantly thinking between the fluctuation of the two sides of the brain, in terms of the left brain being the structure, the, the logic, the fairground reality with all of its, its um, ups and downs and its uh, programming. And the right side of the brain, and I'll come to this later on, is more fluidity, more dreamlike, and it connects to the levels of consciousness. And this is all encoded within, a, within us, and as I'll show, within the DNA. So this image came to mind, and then I got another image as well, which related to Babylon. And I thought to myself, what if, what if this, this place in the mind related to a global a global Babylon or a global city. And then I realized that the place that we're at at the moment is very much this. And this makes perfect sense. And by the way, I'm not, um, you know, I'm not a, a Christian as such or anything like that, but I do have a lot of time for the truth that's written in most of the scriptures, not least the, the other books as well. The fall of Babylon for me is the death of the mind. And as I'll come to, you'll see that what we built for ourselves, which was coming out earlier on in the talks, is this kind of self-delusion that everything we have out there in the world is going to save us and is going to actually uh, make the world a better place at the same time, and it's not, and I'll go into it for, for, for this reason. The other image I have, and this all comes out in the book I've written, this lovely little graphic novel, this story called Kokoro, which means heart, which I'll get into, is that this wonderful vast ocean of, of oneness, consciousness, was, was almost... Um, serving as a, as a, uh, a form of uh, device for Babylon. In other words, what, what's happened is in, in our minds, things have solidified and, this, and as I saw it, this great city-state appeared on the surface of oneness and every aspect of oneness, almost like every small droplet in the ocean, was being pulled towards this vast um, structure. And it, I saw it like this in some ways. It was almost as though the depths of, of where we've, we've, we've sunken to, or the depths of reality, almost like um, this glazier. We're only looking at the tip, and there's much more to it than that. And what I mean by this image, I suppose, is that the, the idea of the, the hidden depths is, is not only the potential within us to actually change the surface of reality, but also the, um, the hidden depths that also lock into what, what was being discussed in the panel, the things that keep us in bondage in that way. So I had this other image as well, which I thought related very nicely to the floating idea of, of Babylon within the state of mind. And I saw this great boat on the ocean and it was a cruise liner. And I thought to myself, if there was such a thing that existed symbolically, I, and I do a lot of symbols, as you probably know, with, with the work, I'm, I'm thinking symbolism all the time. It, um, it, it sometimes keeps me awake at night, you know. Um, but anyway, the boat, I thought, was a wonderful uh, kind of secondary image to what I was showing you back here. And I thought, well, surely, with the type of uh, awareness that we should have as conscious human beings, we should be able to do something with this. We should be able to turn this around quite easily. And again, Babylon could easily be the, the, um, the city structures, the ideas of these floating ships on the water, as I call them, on the water of consciousness. We're much greater than them, but we've forgotten that's all. Which I don't know about you, but I feel like that most of the time. I don't, you know, you're going through, you're going through life, you know, and you know, it's, if it's not one bill after another, to the point where, you know, you're so laden down that what, where the hell can you go? What can you do next? Um, the the funny, the funny thing is, you, you know, the the donkey's got some freedom there, hasn't he? All of a sudden, he's kind of enjoying the breeze. He's, you know, he's kind of enjoying himself. He's no longer pulling that ridiculous weight behind him. And I think this is quite symbolic of where we're going. 